And we'd like to welcome to the show here on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line uh, a man that has uh, uh, supported me a ton, and I'm so happy we could get him on the show today. Athletic Director from Washington State University, uh, Mr. Pat Chun. Pat, welcome to the show. How you doing, bud? Uh, good, Ryan. I'm, I'm thankful, uh, appreciative of you having me on because your your show's namesake took some shots at my alma mater uh, at his Hall of Fame, whatever Hall of Fame <laughs> day is that he was hosting. So uh, I'm guessing this will be friendlier with uh, a, leg- a Washington State legend and Hall of Famer. Uh, so glad to be on the show. Oh, no. Pat Chun, the Ohio State? The Ohio State. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> Pat, oh, it took yeah. him 10 years to get those those jabs in, so you, yeah, know, you gotta Pat, get, look, give it to him. Look, you know Michigan is only going to win once every 15 years. Just let him have that moment. Hey, it's been a long century for those Wolverines, so <laughs> enjoy it. Well, we're, we're kind of experiencing uh, yeah. the same thing in Pullman, right, after beating up on those dogs oh, in the Apple Cup, right? Absolutely, yes, yes. I mean, and I, I, I have uh, vivid memories of being with you on the field before this last Apple Cup, and, and I tell you guys, you could feel Ryan's intensity <laughs> for it for uh against our rivals which uh which are is the school on the west side of our state and thankfully we were able to beat them last november yeah it was the last time i had been to husky stadium since uh since we won it and so it was a little bit of good luck i called the game for westwood one that day and um it was it was fun to call that game it really was they they played an incredible game and i think it solidified something that uh i think a lot of us had seen up to that point interim head coach jake dickert uh, wasn't going to be the interim for much longer after that, as you named with the next head coach at Washington State pretty quickly after. Yeah, and it was one of those deals. And, and you guys, you, you, you've been around coaches and, and been around winning teams, but just to watch this team just go, go from really fractured and broken to just start every single day, just get a little bit better, a little bit more healed, a little bit more focused. And then, you know, in, in our in our atmosphere here, um you know, beating our rivals uh, is is um, always a little bit more important. We're fortunate to be in be a part of uh, a rivalry in which there's there's a long long history and tradition with it. But it was really a culmination of just just a phenomenal uh, you know extraordinary piece of work by Jake Dickard, and uh, he he earned the opportunity to be uh, be our head football coach. And I think we're all you know where we're at on I think what today August 12th. I think we're really excited about the prospects of what could happen this fall. Yeah, I want you to speak a little bit more about Jake Dickert because I was there in the spring call in the spring game and I brought my family with me and um, my wife has been uh, around the program now with me for the last, you know, five years or so or really ever since you took over. And um, she made a comment to me as we were driving back to Spokane about... uh, the optimism that was in the air that there was there were more people smiling and i mean she'd been around at you know at the end of the mike leach era and of course during the nick rolovich era and and i I've, i found jake dickert to be a guy that is never at any point going to put himself in front of the team or or make himself more important than what the the process is and what the team is and she just simply said like there's an optimism there that hasn't been seen. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a results-based business. He's got to go out and win. But, I mean, going into the season and going into this offseason, it's, it's, it's felt like there's a positivity that hasn't been there in a long time. Well, and I think both, both of you are pretty keen on reading people. And Jake is a servant leader, first and foremost, in how he manages his student-athletes. And I think well, that's what you, that, that, uh, uh, probably what you guys felt. And on top of that, I mean, you, and you, you've been in Pullman more than most people. Uh, you know, Jake and his wife, Candace, I label them. I'm from the Midwest. Uh, I label them Wisconsin nice. Uh, and Wisconsin <laughs> nice is, is a mirror image of Pullman nice. So, uh, you know, they're, they're just really thoughtful, caring people that just in their DNA. Uh, and, and we were in a program, we were in a, we were in a space last year, which, which we just needed more care. And, uh, and, and today's day and age, I would also, I would also say um, young people need, you know, in my opinion, to, to get the experience they're supposed to have. And I always got the sense you, your, your teams, when you guys won at the highest levels here at Washington State, um, they were so connected with each other and so connected with the program. And really, that, that is just a byproduct of time. And we live, in, we live in a world now where people are in a hurry and people are in a rush. But Jake is willing and his coaching staff, for that matter, to put in the time to get to know our team and to be connected with each other and to, to care. And uh, I think that's, that's, 
that's probably what you felt percolating uh, in spring ball. And I can tell you after, you know, even in the following months, because, uh, you know, a part of his DNA is, is bringing a team together and the importance of being together. And uh, like I said, where we're supposed to be in early August, I think we all feel pretty good about it just because, um, you know, that that's just part of who he is. He wants to be connected to his team. And, uh, you know, and, and for us, we, we, we've always been a school that has to win in the margins. And one of those margins is, is you know, we got to be a little bit better team. We got to have a little bit better leadership. Uh, we got to be a little bit more together. And if we can, if we, and easier said than done, but if we can get that, that's typically where Washington State is, is, has kind of uh, gained some ground on teams that on paper may have recruited better against us in the past. But, man, um, you know, our, te- our teams that have won at the highest level, they've out team teams, and that, that's kind of been the recipe here for a decade. We're speaking with Pat Chun, Washington State Ath- Director of Athletics. Um, you've seen it all since you've taken over there, right? You, you came in with a deficit uh, in, ath- in your athletic budget. Uh, you've watched NIL become a part of the conversation. And then, of course, the transfer portal and now – USC and UCLA deciding to embark uh, and go someplace else outside the Pac-12 footprint uh, to the Big Ten. Uh, Just kind of talk about what that journey has been like, the evolution and and where Washington State fits in the conversation piece now when we're talking about the 10 remaining teams in this conference. Well, when you take a step back, I mean, nothing's really changed for Washington State. We've always been a program that isn't as resourced as other schools. So we've always, you know, we've always had to, um, be a little bit different and, and really be more dialed in on who we bring in here and coach as coaches and uh, the staff they built up. And that, that's a recipe that will probably have to be a part of Washington State's DNA till the end of time. With that being said, there have been, you know, transformative changes in college athletics uh, just with, you know, one – uh, just with the continued amount of money that gets poured into our system through these TV contracts. On top of that, we deregulated transfers last year for football. Uh, on top of that, we have this unregulated uh, name, image, and likeness environment, and and we still operate out of a historical model where where we're tr- where we, you know we need to figure out ways to put more in our student athletes' pockets and. Um, and without sacrificing the educational experience, because at the end of the day, it's still the most important piece of um, of the entire experience, and uh, it's the one thing that really remains undebatable is is, is the best pathway to changing your econ- your socioeconomic status to, uh, to 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 raise your sight lines on what a future could look like is is, is still through through education, specifically college education. So our system is in a period of dynamic change. What USC and UCLA did. Um, I guess a month and a half ago is just a byproduct of, of where, where, of, of where this thing unfortunately is headed, and 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 how TV is impacting uh, a lot of decisions. Um, you know, for you know, a, a lot of short-term decisions relative to you know what history and tradition and what what those two schools have meant to the Pac, Pac-10, Pac-12, but. It's where we're at, and like in any 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 era that we've ever had in college athletics, it's incumbent on us to try to, uh, you know, take what we have and try to make the most out of it. And where we sit today, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable uh, with with the commitment of our nine other schools in the Pac-10 or Pac-12, and uh, our willingness to stay together and move forward. And and you don't know what what, what you don't know, but you know, all of our conversations have been forward thinking, and I think everybody here on the West Coast knows what's at stake uh, and how important it is uh, for us to stay together as a conference. Uh, the, 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 that conversation, right, it, a lot of you sat in those meetings over the last year with UCLA and, and USC where you had Martin Jarmond and, and Mike Bone and, 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 and I assume President Schultz and those president, president meetings and stuff like that. And, you know, what was said to their face wasn't necessarily what was going on behind the scenes. Um, what, what, gives you uh, a, a confidence that what you're experiencing together right now, the 10 of you, uh, makes you feel like that's a more solid foundation than, than clearly it was just over a month and a half ago? I, I would just say the level of candor uh, in all of our meetings and the, the types of questions that are being asked. Um, I mean, they're, they're, I, I, everybody understands what's at stake. Everybody understands, you know, our, you know, I've, I've, I've said this multiple times. Our, our, our biggest threat is that multiple conferences, our biggest threat is one conference making a decision if they want to expand more into the West coast. Uh, uh, and that's the conference of my alma mater. So, 
Um, we recognize that. So I would just, I, I guess the comfort comes in. It, it's not, it's, you know, these meetings have been intense. They've been uh, highly communicative. Uh, but the fact that there's been candor in all of our meetings is, is where everybody's asking the right questions. And the fact that we're all asking the right questions, uh, it gives you a little bit of comfort that everyone, everyone is, is trying to, you know, work together to move forward. Have you had, um, have you had many uh, calls uh, or, or interactions with alumni of Washington State University uh, kind of panicking because of, of of all this, or has there been a pretty like I've I've tried to come from an optimistic side of this, regardless of what anything looks like, whatever the landscape looks like. The tradition and history of Washington State football is never going to be go away. It's it's always going to be there. Football is going to be played there. It's going to be played at a very high level and and be very competitive. I, I think there's some fear from people that 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 for some reason Washington State football uh, in this you know, new look of what college football could be no longer exists. And that's, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Well, I think there's two things. One, we have a president who actually was uh, over a decade ago, the president of Kansas state and sat through kind of the same quicksand with the big 12 and they were able to survive. So one, just having a president, I, I, you know, I, I say this in all seriousness, I think Kurt's done more to calm me down than vice versa uh, with, with, with all just, just with just how, um, you know, just, just how uncertain the environment is and was, I guess, especially at the uh, beginning parts of July. I, I, I think the nice outcome of all this is all these, all these, um, you know, the athletic, you can go right down the list, all, all these, these, these sports writers that cover college football um, as they, as they try to, fo- you know, follow the data on why, you know, behind all these decisions, which is basically TV ratings, you know, lo and behold, Washington State actually turns on TV sets. Yep. And I think that's been the most comforting thing, that that, is, that has been very, very public, especially in recent weeks, that, um, you know, just from a value standpoint, what Washington State brings to the table and what the nine other schools in the Pac-12 bring, bring to the table is re- the reason why the 10 schools have to, you know, need to stay together and want to stay together. But our, our story is a little bit unique. And, and when, you, when you try to do the math on, on why does little old Washington State turn on TV sets, you know, you, you know, you could date it back to the, the guy who, who designed our logo because it's our belief it's one of the most recognizable logos uh, in all of college athletics. And you just build up from Jack Thompson, Dennis Erickson, Mike Price. I know this is the 25-year anniversary of your Rose Bowl team, and that was – uh, what seemed like a Mount Everest at one point that, that you and your teammates got us over. And, you know, you fast forward another Rose Bowl and the Mike Leach years and game day coming here and Gardner Minshew. And maybe it's because we've always, you know, thrown the ball around because, you know, uh, for your, for your, for your crew there, I actually, our SID gave me some trivia. If you want me to grill Ryan about his, uh, about his, his, his Rose Bowl year. Uh, but you look back and it's like, maybe it's because we threw the, threw the ball around and we've been easy to watch. Maybe, People like turning watching us because we're always David to someone else, Elias. But bottom line, Washington State turns on TV sets, and, I, I, and when, when it's all said and done, uh, our our footprint specifically to us does include Seattle. And I think people forget that. Like, yeah, we're in Eastern Washington. There's there's wheat fields all around us. Uh, but for whatever reason, Washington State turns on TV sets in this corner of the world and uh, and throughout the country. So that's the most comforting thing that I remind people that it's the data. That's driving this. It's TV ratings. Uh, obviously, we have, uh, uh, you know, from our from our regents to our president, chancellor, everybody on campus here recognizes the importance and value of intercollegiate athletics. So uh, wherever this thing heads, um, which our belief is it's going to be with the Pac-12 staying together, you know, I feel really confident that, hey, Washington State brings so much to the table and the numbers show it. it, it it's we're, we're, we're too valuable to be left out of any conversation. Well, I agree. I'm a little biased, but I, I completely agree. Uh, we're speaking with Pat Shun, uh, Director of Athletics at Washington State University. Before I get you out of here, uh, you just made reference that you, you sent that in a text. I had completely forgot this is the 25th anniversary uh, of our Rose Bowl. Uh, it really makes me feel old. But is there anything uh, planned or in store for that this, this fall uh, that I should be made aware of? Well, well, we'll honor that team, but my guess is, unfortunately, in your in your new life, you're working on Saturdays. So, uh, so, uh, so we'll have to figure that piece out. But uh, that is a historic moment in Washington State, and uh, um, you know, it, it, it's one that really you could argue put us on the map. And the fact that 
you know, our, our, one of our great alums, Keith Jackson at that time was, was the voice of college football. And uh, that, that year just reestablished us. And just looking back, I mean, Bill Stevens, you may, you may know this off the top of your head, but do you know how many guys in total uh, from that 97 team uh, ended up getting drafted or signed for agent contracts the next year in 98? I, I think there was four of us that were drafted and I would suspect, I don't know, 10 or so got, uh, got free agent contracts nine so it's still the most in school history so it's 13 actually uh from that that 97 team ended up on at least in a, in a training camp yep. in the fall which says a lot about the talent on that football team yeah it was an incredibly talented football team i had an amazing teammates and coaching staff and um finally being able to walk on that field and see washington state in the end zone was was something really special hey one quick question before you kick me off the radio who the heck did you have a 21 yard run against um in 97 yeah that's your longest run of the year it kind of sticks out on your stat sheet here i i i don't know i don't know who it would have been against <laughs> i'm trying to think I, I i had a touchdown run against boise state i had a long run in the rose bowl that that, that yeah, I, 20 was not 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 anything to look i mean that's considered a big play by some stats like the year before yards. the year before at ucla i had a 48 yard run so that that i that oh, trounces wow. that one yeah yeah well thanks yeah. thanks for the little boost right. to, yeah yeah so um i'll see you in uh i'll see you in a few weeks in week one versus uh versus idaho oh, yeah, you're here for the opener yes sir all right go Cougs. appreciate appreciate you having me on pat shun everybody washington state director of athletics go Cougs.